I was channel flicking and I happened to come across this documentary about surrogacy in mm. India and I didn't know but these... Big business over there. It's the biggest in the world, $4.5 billion. Wow. wow. Yeah. And the reason it's the biggest is that it's the cheapest. Mm. What will cost you $100,000 in the States will cost you twenty, maybe in India. Oh, really? And uh, I just found that really fascinating because for me it was a real metaphor between the relationship between the East and the West and how you know we, it started with call centres and now yeah. we've outsourced fertility. My Goodness. But it's also a bigger picture of, you know, the whole ageing process, mm. how far do you take it, mm. when do you say you're, you're too old, or yeah. but you don't have to nowadays, science can take you yeah. as far as you want to go. Yeah, but then... do, you, do you kind of understand that desperation, if you like, that drives people to, to do that, though? Because, yeah. I mean, you conceived naturally, didn't you? At, what, were you 44? Yeah, 43. Had yeah. A, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, wow. I was very lucky, but I think if it hadn't happened, of course, I would have considered other options. Mm. It's a really tricky one. I think when I started mm. um, looking at surrogacy, my initial reaction was, this is really exploitative, mm -hmm. and I worry really for the women, the yeah. very poor women. Yeah. That who are the carriers. Yeah. Who are literally the microwave, you yeah. know, ping and the baby's ready. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, when you talk to people whose lives it's changed, who've yeah, been yeah. desperate for children yeah. and have made wonderful parents, yeah. it suddenly becomes a lot more grey. So I've really tried not to be judgmental. I mean, the, the main character, Sharma, British Asian woman, mm. much younger partner, desperate for a child, and Mala is the surrogate. surrogate. And India. you see it from both, both their points yeah. of view. And it's a kind of a thriller, because actually the power balance shifts through unexpected circumstances. Completely. But the spine of the book is very much these two um, women. We'll see it on screen, aren't we? Is it, is it being made Eventually, in... yes. Yeah. The television rights have just been bought. Wow. Yeah, that'll be a, 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 probably a couple of years off. Fantastic. That's kind of normal for you, isn't it? All your books turn into movies or TV shows. Yeah, it's quite good, it's quite actually. Quite good. Another, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> To pay that mortgage, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> indeed, absolutely. And you went, was it, uh, was it last year you went to America or? Yes, I filmed um, uh, a new comedy series called The Brink with Jack Black and Tim Robbins. Wow, it was very exciting. Which I think is on in June on um, Sky. Yeah, on Atlantic. You're saying it's very different over there. For is, black and Asian actors. Is, yeah. Yes, yeah, they do cast in a completely different way, mm. I think, just because it is a diverse society there, and so the television reflects it more. And it's just quite refreshing to sort of go in for an audition and you don't mm. go, well, what's my problem this week? Is yeah. it arranged marriage? Am I, <laughs> am I a terrorist? Which yeah. one is it? You know, you can just be a person. Yeah. What sort of character do you play in it? I play, um, well, it's about a really dim CIA agents in Pakistan. Mm. And Jack Black plays the very dim CIA agent and he has a best friend who's his fixer in Pakistan, right. and I'm the fixer's mum. Oh, and nice. so all my scenes were with Jack Black, oh. and I hate Jack Black. And did Black's you film character. it in, Bla in Pakistan? No, we filmed it in Hollywood. Hollywood. Oh, even yeah. better. Yeah. Masquerading as Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what do you prefer playing, serious or comedic roles? Because you do both very well. I, I love the variety, actually, and um, I find that a lot of people that do comedy can actually do straight roles really mm. well because comedy is actually hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's lots of examples, yeah. you know, Steve Coogan and Kathy yeah. Burke and, and Julie Walters, prime example, can just... I like I like the variety of it, really. Mm. Yeah. Is it a bit pin pinch me, pinch me when you're sort of sitting there and you've got Jack Black on one it's side? And yeah. It is. My first day, I mean, the, the, it's vast studios um, in Hollywood and they mm. take you around in a golf buggy. As they do. As they do. <laughs> so I was, I got in my first day really quite nervous, you yeah. know, the sun was shining, the Hollywood sign in the back background mm. and then into the golf buggy got Jack Black and Tim Robbins. Oh, well. Hello. <laughs> did, did you have this one is quite of those impressive. chairs with a star on the back? Because they do that. I didn't. You didn't. I what about excited. Willie Bago? Did you get one of them? <laughs> yes, you get a nice Willie Bago, but what you get is this travelling snack wagon. Oh, lovely. Which is like... <laughs> now you're talking. Now you're talking. I tell you, <clears throat> it's free, you just open the door and it's full of the nicest kind of food you imagine. Why don't they have that here? Yeah. Yeah, something uh, going wrong. Get a cup did, of you get all that? Here. did you get all of that when, of course, you did fantastic Broadchurch? Oh, on Broadchurch, yeah. uh, that was more the cup of tea and a biscuit. <laughs>